Hello you beautiful people and welcome to I Am The Hammer, the show in which I track my grey night's progress. This was it, this was the big one, this was the London Grand Tournament, but how did I get on? Let's find out. So in this episode, I am going to be going through all of my games. I'm going to be speaking at, about them from a Grey Knight perspective in terms of the matchups and how I feel we play each mission. Um, I'm then going to talk about how I felt I did um, and analyse each unit that I took. Um, I've got an updated matrix for you. And then we're going to end with uh, telling you what's next on the horizon. So um, last time I left you, didn't actually know what I was taking. I had kind of, I gave you three list options. And in the end, after a beautiful car journey with my good friend Lee off to some golf, um, I decided that I didn't want to go into a matchup and feel that oh, I can't win this game. Like, as if I go into a matchup where I'm playing against a good player on, let's say, Thousand Sons or something. I didn't want to be in a situation where I thought, well, this is an unwinnable game. Damn, I wish I'd taken something else. As such, I opted for, um, if you remember, list two, um, which involved me basically taking a bit of everything. The list was designed to be able to take on everything and have um, have tech for all the different matchups, okay? Um, I've just suddenly remembered there is actually a missing unit here. I did have a tech marine as well because I had 70 points spare. So this list um, was two librarians. They would be solo, but if I played into Thousand Sons, then one would plug into the Terminators, uh, sorry, the Paladins. I um, had a Grandmaster with Sigil um, with the 10 Paladins. I had Drago with five Terminators. Um, I had two Dread Knights, two units of Strikes, one unit of Interceptors, and as I said, a tech marine. Um, if you pay attention to the show, you'll know that my last list in this version actually had a Navigator in it. The reason I didn't end up going with the Navigator is because I felt I wanted the Grand Master in the list because of all the Necrons that would be about. Um, and so because of that, that would take me to 2005 points. So I swapped the Navigator for a Tech Marine, um, which I haven't written down there. But he was there and his job was basically occasionally, if I got lucky and positioning wise, um, he would buff a Dread Knight, but other than that, he was just designed to run out and die turn one, basically. Um, for points, of course. So that was my list. Um, Waited for pairings, and I got drawn against Nathaniel, who um, I hadn't heard of, but all my teammates had. And that's because he was a top Tyranid player, um, ranked 26 in the world, um, currently just in the ITC. Had recently gone undefeated at Lone Star, 6-0. and um, Had won a big GT recently. I'm like, oh, that could be an interesting test. He had 30 gene steers and that sort of thing. Um, but he actually dropped. So I found out on Thursday or Friday he dropped out. Um, so presumably because of like, storms in America, couldn't fly over. So I got repaired on the day manually into Lockie. So Lockie was an Australian. He was on here on holiday for a friend with a friend. And he had actually played in the Invitational the day before. So I was a bit like, oh, this could, this could, this is still going to be a, a hard opening game. Um, I've never played the Votan matchup before. I imagined it boiled down to, I will try and hide, he'll try and shoot me, and we'll see where uh, the cookie crumbles. Um, he had two land forts, he had 20 Terminators, he had a block of 10 with the Plasma, and then two fives with Volkite. He had two units, three bikes, he had some Berserks and Sagittarius, some Hearthkin, you know, standard, standard stuff. Um, his mission was Terraform, so, um, you know, there's going to be a race to the middle, can you terraform the objectives, um, etc. Um, in terms of deployment, I was pretty much just covering all over the place. Um, he had made a big push for my right-hand side, that was where a lot of his things were. Which meant that for me, I'm like, right, well, I'm going to attack your left-hand side then. Which is exactly what I did. Um, in a good turn of events, I got to go second, um, which meant he kind of pushed up. Um, then I drew Mark for death. And what happened on my turn one was basically my 10 Paladins went and landed in his um, on his deployment zone. Three inches away, in his back corner. Sat there pretty. 
I killed both units of bikes. Uh, my my um, two dread knights were hidden in the bottom left hand corner and just able to get a, a bead on the bikes, but one dread knight actually picked them all up. Um, and I just started. I really worked hard over the first couple of turns on clearing that left side to lock it down. Um, he had got a terraform off, and then he got another terraform off on the right hand side. And there was this moment where eventually, turn three, he committed his um, half guard on the right hand side to try and pick up my paladins. He killed about half the paladins. And there was this moment where I was like, right, okay, let's see if my five paladins can kill these bloody half guard. Um, but the reality is that never happens. And as soon as they're sat there, they're not doing anything. Like Terminators are just shuffling along slowly and they don't have great range. So I therefore transitioned to moving over to the left flank, which I'd already locked down because I killed all his stuff, constantly knocking him off the middle and knocking him off the home field. And the importance of this was because I had been slightly behind on primary due to secret mission, which, oh sorry, due to terraform, which meant I could secret mission. So once I knew I could secret mission, I then knew it was a really high priority to keep knocking him off primary and making sure I scored my own. Now, scoring my own was always going to be very easy. His 10 um, troops battle line were dead after turn two. All I had to do was keep five strikes sat in my home field objective and then bottom of turn five, just go and teleport them over to his deployment zone. So I was never not going to score it. And the thing I think I did really well in this game was constantly counting out the score, the primary. Even from turn three, I was doing the maths like, what do I need to knock him down to? Do I need to sacrifice this unit to knock him um, down by another um, four, etc.? Um, so yeah, I feel like I played this game actually really well. A big concern for me is I don't normally play this mission very well, and I was certain I was going to be rusty. So um, I actually felt really like I did well. Um, I should add, um, on the Thursday, I came down with a pretty impressive cold, so I felt like utter shit this entire weekend. I felt really, really ill. Um, and on top of that, I've got a baby due in a couple of weeks, and my partner had gone into hospital on the Saturday just because she was worried about the bump, and I was waiting to hear how a scan went. So about halfway through this game, I got um, a message to say, everything's fine, I was worried for no reason, and I was like, I'm good to finally focus. Um, but yeah, so I won that game um, 88-76. Uh, I felt good value for that win. I felt like I played um, played pretty well. Um, so yeah, we had beaten the Votan and we were 1-0. and 0. So next up, I drew into Andrew. <laughs> Andrew was Lockie's friend from Australia who had travelled over with him for the last few weeks. Um, he was, playing into, he was playing with guards and he had three Rogal Dawns, three tank commanders, three chimeras and troops, basically. Um, absolutely lovely guy, like we had a really great chat. I think it would be fair to say that Andrew was here to push models around and shoot stuff. Um, and he went first and he just, his first turn lasted approximately two minutes as he just shoved all his tanks forward. So then I obviously spent some time coming up with a plan. Um, and because you know, this is still a scary matchup in terms of I can't kill tanks particularly well, I mean, he doesn't really do that. Um, but it is purged the foe, so he's shoved all his tanks up towards the middle. I decided to attack his backfield and knock him off his home field objective. Um, and I also decided to attack his natural expansion objective. So what I did was the Paladins landed in his backfield and shot away and killed all the stuff on his home field. Um, some Interceptors dropped um, just away from his natural expansion objective, killed the Calidus there and far and faded onto it. Um, he then carried on pushing towards the middle and then I was just like, right, let's just, let's just go for it. And over the next few turns, I was able to um, pick away everything. I did, I think, quite a good job of tagging stuff, not letting him fire all his blast weapons. Um, and this was by far the quickest game I've ever played. I mean, we were genuinely done in like an hour and a half. Like, he was playing super fast. I was like, I could tell after like turn two, I'd already won the game. So I was playing pretty rapid and playing very unlike me and just going for the throat and trying to kill the stuff. And at the end of turn three, he had one Rogal Dawn left and two troops left. So I had to keep them alive one at a time so I could get my kill more um, and kill for uh, give myself the shot of the 100, which I did. So I got 144. 
I should add, dice were ridiculous in this game. Mine were mine were so good, and his weren't very good at all. And it was a bit like, oh man, it's wasting all this good luck. I don't think this game really indicates how this matchup is, um, because obviously good guard lists at the moment will start with 18 Bulgrin. Um, but I was quite happy to be able to show that I could deal with lots of vehicles when I needed to. And I feel like, again, I played well. I made a lot, all the right decisions. And yeah, sure, Andrew gave me the outs to do so, but I did feel like I made good decisions in that game. Um, so yeah, feeling pretty good. 2-0. and oh. I'm like, ah, oh, the rust is gone. Bring it. Who's next? Well, I'll tell you who was next. Ben Jones. Um, for those of you who don't know, Ben Jones is, in my opinion, one of the best players in the country. Um, he doesn't do well to teams' championship stuff, but he's a genuinely excellent player. Lovely, lovely guy. Represents Vanguard Tactics. Um, always a pleasure to play. Um, I played him once before when I was Harlequins, and he was... Um, Eldar, and basically I had no way of getting to him whilst his swooping hawks popped out, shot me, and then ran away. Um, so I was hoping for a bit of closer game this time, because, you know, obviously my Grey Knights, I feel, give me an in. And looking at his list, it was the sort of thing I had played against before. Um, he had the Eradicator Brick, he had the Aggressor Brick, he had three Vindicators. Ugh, I hate those. Um, jump Pack uh, Intercessors, um, Assault Intercessors, some scouts and those damn infiltrators. So I feel like hmm, I think I can make this game close, and that's exciting. I'm looking forward to playing a really top player and making this game close. Um, so I think this game probably deserves a good talk because there's some key takeaways here. Takeaway one is that this mission, this map, sucks if they have 12 inch deep strike denial which Ben did. So his infiltrators, you see his big L on the top right hand corner, his infiltrators strung themselves out across. That cuts out the entire deployment zone. I cannot drop down in his entire deployment zone. Um, and I can't see them, so I can't get to them either. Grey Knights, when they're struggling and they're trying to play that hideaway, what they often end up doing is, you know, well, I'm going to come behind you, I'm going to spread you out, I'm going to cause these issues. I now didn't have that as an option. I had to play front-facing. And the issue with that is he had units which could try and generate the trade. So in the bottom right-hand corner, he had five scouts. Top left-hand corner, he had five incursors. Now, yes, yeah, sure, I can run out onto those objectives and I can deny his primary. I absolutely can do that. But then I use that unit and then he just takes it back um he parked his vindicator so he had one vindicator um by that l in the top left he had one vindicator um by the middle l and he had one vindicator by the right hand l and he was just covering all the lanes um and <laughs> as a grey knight player the reason you love grey knights is you have so many options right <sighs> i i i just found myself constantly apologising to Ben for turns two and three because I genuinely didn't know what to do. He kind of got a 10 on primary and then I think he got a 15. I was restricted to fives. There was this moment, you know, so he went first, so I got to go second again and he kind of, I, when I had my turn, I sent my strikes over to the bottom right-hand corner just to take that objective. And he had to go for um, an eight-inch charge with some vets. Um, and into those guys to get around the wall block. And uh, he managed to make the charge, which gave him like storm hostile objective and, um, you know, denied me primary. I'd gone, went on my turn, I'd had um, deploy lo de established locus and I'd stuck my tech marine in the middle objective on the left hand side and uh, was like, Ah, oh, I'll, um, I just hope you don't draw Assassinate next turn. And obviously he drew Assassinate and Storm Hostile. Obviously the Storm Hostile was an issue there because as soon as he moved within nine of that, I could run away and he wouldn't get the Assassinate. Um, but yeah, him making that eight-inch eight charge was annoying. But then my turn too, I was like, what do I do? Like, I can't get to any of his good stuff. Like his Eradicators are in Deep Strike, 
the aggressors are just parked in that middle waiting to charge out. I can't get to him. I can't get behind him. I can't see anything. What do I do? Uh, I spent ages trying to think. And eventually, I put my paladins in the bottom right-hand corner, shot and killed the scouts that were there. Killed, um, I can't remember his name now, some one of the Ultramarine characters, um, the lesser characters, um, and his, whatever he was with, um, Assault Intercessors. So I cleared out the bottom right-hand corner buying of Indicator, knowing that I would be able to sigil somewhere if he brought to bear a load of shooting, and we'll see what happens. Um, he had rapid ingressed his um, eradicators onto that middle bottom right one, so out of the two objectives, the bottom right one. Eradicators landed there. Um, on his turn, he obviously fired, set it up so that he could shoot other things, but also shoot my um, shoot my paladins. Um, my paladins teleported to them behind that my big middle L with the idea that they would move out, charge, kill the eradicators maybe kill the Vindicator, which was um, sat in that, by that middle, bottom right um, objective as well. And I'm like, okay, so if I could do those things, if I can clear this out, if I clear those things out and then the aggressors come out, maybe I can miss away, maybe I've got a bit of an in, because I was feeling the pressure a bit here um, on primary. And then I drew Assassinate, I'm like, cool, there's an Apothecary just sat in the middle of the board with the Eradicator, so I could position him out, okay. I'm like, right, um, I need to start killing his battle line in order to try and give me the battle line one. So my Interceptors went over to the top left-hand corner to try and kill his Assault Intercessors. And it felt like if this went turn well, I was still behind, but it gave me an out, right? So what happened was... Um, the Grandmaster left the Apothecary on one wound. The Paladins left the Vindicator on one wound. And the Eradicators, one guy left on one wound. And then the Interceptors killed two Assault Intercessors and all died on the fight back. So with that, I think we might as well have shook hands then. Um, because then the Aggressor Brick walked out. The Vindicator fired into the Paladins, the one wound Vindicator fired into the Paladins and killed three. And then the Aggressor Brick and the Victrix Guard and Minus Kalgar killed all seven Paladins. And that was good. Um, we had an interesting thing where, I mean, he was on 99, I was on 44, was I going to get my secret mission? And I, I literally can't get into his deployment zone, right? And I've said I need to get my battle line in there. Um, so... I came up with this play where if I could Drago charge into the Vindicator, kill the Vindicator, I could then, um, so the Vindicator is parked, so you, I don't think you can see my mouse, um, the Vindicator is parked basically on the left hand middle L, so you see where they've got the giant L there in the middle, Vindicator is parked up against that, um, we've got some jump pack intercessors which are trailing from his deployment zone like that deployment zone line edge outwards so if i can kill the vindicator i think i'm going to consolidate and get one model in because the secret mission is within not wholly within that was my out he pointed out that in teams obviously um he could heroic with that jump pack intercessor squad and just stop the play which he's absolutely right i did have a counter to that so i did have a dread knight still there so the dread knight would have charged into the jump packs stop them from heroicing, then I could have done my play and it would have still worked. Either way, Drago's unit did kill the, um, the Vindicator and I was able to pull off that Consolidate and get in there and get a 64-99 loss. Um, I felt quite deflated after this game because I felt like I'd never been in it. Now, I have to say, like, I genuinely got outplayed here. Like, Ben gave me no in. Ben's a lovely, friendly guy. You could tell even he was tense for like the first two turns. He was very focused, very like making sure because he hadn't really played the matchup that much. But for me, I don't know how I win that game. Um, we spoke about it afterwards and he said, I don't know how you win that game either. There wasn't anything you did, which was an issue. I don't know whether... I can keep denying his primary, 
But then I just lose all my stuff, and then at the end of the game, he just moves out, and I don't have the stuff to kill him. Maybe, I, I guess yeah, I'd have to try being more aggressive. I tried my usual way, and it just didn't work. The mission didn't help, you know, um, on another mission or not table quarters, the infiltrators maybe don't cover quite as much room and maybe I can get into the corners where the infiltrators aren't with my three inch deep strike, that gives me some outs. So the, the quarters didn't help. The infiltrators just shut me down completely. Maybe if it's a um you know, any of the other missions, maybe it would have been a bit better. Yeah, it was it was a bit frustrating just to feel like you're never in a game. Again, I didn't feel like I gave a good account of myself. I just want to play a really good player and feel like I give a good account of myself. And I didn't really ever feel like I did in that game. So that was a bit disappointing. But hey, onwards upwards, we um, went out for a lovely team meal. Um, I say lovely. Um, we got there at half eight and we were served our drinks at quarter to ten. So... Thanks for that premiere in, smashed it. And then one of our players had to drop from food poisoning. Even better. Anyway, round four. Drakari. Now, <clears throat> my teammates, I've got two very good um, Drakari teammates, Tom and Bob. They like to confidently tell me that this is an easy win for um, Grey Knights. Um... I've only played the match at once, which was into Jack Tight, obviously one of the best players in the country. Um, and I lost that. But looking at this list, um, and I was like, I think I'm going to be okay. You know, like, I think I've got the tools here to win this game. Takari always set me on edge, but I felt like I could kind of do a trick here. So it was a reasonably standard list. He had 10 witches in a raider. He had five witches with Lilith in a Venom. He had a couple of Ravagers. Um, he had three inches of Scourges, one Haywire, two Dark Lance. Uh, beast Pack, big blob Beast Pack. Um, a reasonably standard thing. Now, the only thing going against me, or in my mental state, is it's Burden of Trust. And I hate Burden of Trust with a passion. Um, I think it's a really, really stupid mission. Um... And so you have this ridiculous situation where no one ever scores primary. So if you go second and at the end you can just walk out onto objectives, that's a huge primary swing. On top of that, if you've gone second, you've probably got a better chance of getting off a secret mission, which again is a huge primary swing. So go second in this mission is a huge advantage. Um, and obviously I'd gone second all last, all three of my last games, which is really good for Grey Knights. So, such so as life, I didn't get to go second in here. So that creates a bit of an issue. Um, so I went first and I didn't really do much. All I did was send my um, strikes over to the bottom right hand corner to get that objective and just start trying to get some primary. I did think about sending my um, interceptors over to the top left just to try and draw him out. But I was like, well, he was probably gonna send his beast pack over there anyway. And at that point it doesn't really achieve anything. So then I missed anyway. Um, and sure enough, his beast pack went over to the top left-hand corner and he sent a witch-filled raider over to try and kill the five strikes. Um, now, Drakari have, the, this detachment is one of the best ways of getting around um, uh, mists because they can move their vehicle nine inches away, spend the CP um, so they can disembark and charge and then get out three inches and then have a six inch charge and they bypass uh, mists. Which is what I did with the 10 witches and the succubus. Now, I'm not entirely sure on the mass, but he had a succubus as well. But I'm like, well, I've got 10 wounds. Arm of Contempt, I'm worth three up. He's, or maybe it was a four up, but he's wounding me on fours. Like, I think it was a three up and I'm like, well, you need to cause 30 wounds and you're wounding me on four. So that's 60, that's 60 hits you need to get to get 30 wounds through for me to die. So one damage. So I'm like, I think I'm pretty safe. Anyway, the succubus then killed like three <laughs> and uh, then I just, or two, and then I just died. And I was like, Ah, this is a bit of a problem. 
So <clears throat> I decided to try and deal with the beast pack and lock down the left hand side. And then I decided to put the, because the witches had got back into the raider in the bottom right hand corner. Um, so I, I sent my paladins and the dread knight, maybe a dread knight? I think it was just the paladins actually, um, over to kill those, that beast pack. Um, and then I had some interceptors to try and grab that objective. Um, and then Drago's unit just teleported over to the bottom right hand corner. So I was like, the witches won't hurt me if you like, it's Drago's unit and uh, Terminator 5 man. And I think that let's get that primary going. Um, I picked up the beast pack with the paladins and the interceptors um, and kind of went over to you. Now, at this point, it should be mentioned, um, Jason was playing this really well in terms of he had turtled up his army in like, in his deployment zone, basically. He was ready to jump out and do his thing. But he was he spoke to his teammates and he had a very clear game plan. Don't spread out, which is what Grey Knights want you to do. Just stay in your ball, send out stuff as and when to score your cards, but just stay in that ball. And go second, which well, he managed to go second. Um, but he was playing this really well. I, he wasn't giving me ins to try and pick away stuff. I don't think I got my turns two and three right in terms of target alloc allocation. I overkilled stuff. And there's other stuff I could have shot at, especially with the Paladin Brick turn three, when they ended up just shooting and kill it, nearly killing, or actually killing a, a Ravager. And they could have shot and killed other things and charged the Ravager. So I just didn't get this right. It's not an excuse, but I had had an absolutely appalling night's sleep. I'd been waking up like every half hour. And I just don't think I was quite as sharp as I would have liked for a, for a Sunday morning game. I certainly didn't feel like I was getting it right. At the bottom of three, I was on six points of primary. But Jason was only on four, so he got to take a secret mission. I've never had a secret mission taken against me so this was exciting so i had to try and think about playing around that i then made sure i was like right well i need to be building on my primary and i did do that i locked down the bottom right hand corner i locked down the top left hand corner and i was getting eights there um but i bought a secret mission well my entire paladin brick was sat in the top left hand corner and i don't think he really was ever going to be able to deal with that so it wasn't going to be the whole th um three well, he could have actually gone for that one um, because I kind of abandoned my home at the end. Um, it wasn't going to be Warlord on taking my home field because that was too far away. So it's probably going to be Battle Line. Um, he had a bit of a bad turn four where he sent some Incubi over to try and kill Drago and the five Terminators. Um, he just didn't do it. Um, and he left a Terminator alive. Um, and my turn five was basically, right, where do I put my strikes so that they're safe? So what I did was I put them, you see on my left hand flank, that L where the five is, I put them there. They were hidden from shooting. So the only thing that could get to them was a venom full of witches, which was sat in the middle of the board. Um, and I was like, well, it's probably quite far anyway. We were really running out of time at this point. I didn't really measure it properly, but I'd forgotten that Lilith was in that Venom. And that is a tiny my fault. He draws his cards and we work out that Jason needs to kill this one wound um, Librarian, he needs to kill a one wound Terminator, um, and uh, needs to kill the battle line unit, the strikes, um, to win the game. He'd win the game by two. Um, and fires off a dark lance into the librarian, fail the save, librarian dead. Drops his man, um, man, mandrakes into shoot their dev wound guns into um, the terminator on one wound, gets one six through, four up, feel no pain from Drago, fail it, dead terminator. Lilith's unit come out, they make their six inch charge, Lilith kills, um, strikes, game over. 70-72 loss. Uh, this sucks, right? Um, I was pretty deflated afterwards. I felt like I'd had that game and I'd thrown it away. Um, 
I know Jason was very kind afterwards. He said, like, you know, you played it really well. I just got lucky. And yet, to an extent, there were moments, like, um, where he had a bit of luck. But I don't feel at all like I got that game right. And so, therefore, I feel like that's on me. I could have put the strikes where Liv couldn't get to. Obviously, uh, you know, I... I, in hindsight, there are so many ways I could have protected those strikes. Um, he, yeah, I, yeah. There's so many, there's so many variables here right, that I can talk about, but because I, it, I don't want to take too long. Basically, there were ways in which I win that game, even from just in the context of turn five. Um, but I didn't. We're all learning. Um, again, we had hardly any time left, so I was probably a bit like flustered and. Um, just wasn't able to get it quite right but you know I think Jason deserves full credit you got to play to your outs right and he had a really good game plan going in I didn't really have a game plan well my game plan was kill all the um kill all the transports and then he has to foot slot but he didn't ever let me see the transport so with that regard I think he did really well so if you watch it Jason really well played um but yeah I was, I was I'm not gonna lie I was pretty gutted about this loss I felt like it's a game I should be winning and I didn't so I was really flat after that game. I kind of had to take some time out at lunch um, to kind of just mong out. And yeah, I wasn't mentally in the best place. Um, one thing I pride myself on is that ability to pick myself up and get that drive. Um, I didn't do it in this game. Um, I played into Chaos Space Marines, Renegade Raiders, played into a chap called Alex who Within two or three minutes of talking to him, I was like, oh, this guy's good, damn it. He also just lost um, by two points. Um, and he had a Renegade Raiders list, so he had Chosen, he had Rubrics, Vindicators, Legionnaires. I have played this matchup a few times now, and it always just comes down to basically, a barring the odd crazy thing happening, it comes down to player skill. That's how this matchup goes. Um, so it was, um, it was always going to be a really close game. It was Scorched Earth, um, and he kind of just had a lot of stuff, right? And he he went first and just kind of stayed, but he spent a lot of time with his um, with his uh, screening and that sort of thing. And he had this rhino just kind of sat just out of his deployment zone, right in the top middle. I was like, right, well, let's drop that rhino. Let the Chosen come out. He's only got one Vindicator up there. Um, the Chosen come over, I miss it away, I then shoot away the Chosen, and then I just lock down my natural expansion, because obviously he's he's threatening, right? He's, he's threatening that area. He's got another Chosen unit parked in the middle ruin. Two Dread Knights drop down, shooting to the Rhino. He makes four out of four, four up saves, and because um, he died contempted and it lives on three wins. I've sacrificed an interceptor unit um, into his deployment zone for behind enemy lines with fire and fade. And I'll be like, oh God, it's not ideal. So sure enough, um, how it all comes. So he gets out a legionnaire unit from that three wound rhino, which is now parked right up against my L. He leaves the chosen in there. He sends the middle chosen um, over, to have like a six inch charge into some strikes. And I missed away with the strikes, so he doesn't have any charges there, but he does have the charge back into the interceptors. <sighs> the Vindicator then one shots the Dread Knight. Now, I, the maths doesn't mean this happens, right? A Vindicator should not one shot a Dread Knight, but it seems to happen more often than not. Um, he got through four wounds, and I, because I failed all my saves. And he rolled 13 and killed it to the T. So that's really annoying. Um, but anyway, I'm like, right, here we go. Here's the turn. If I can kill the Rhino, the Legionnaires, the Chosen inside that Rhino, and the Chosen kind of sat around the outside. I feel like I'm in, or kill most of it anyway. I feel like I'm in a reasonable position. So the Paladins um, land in the middle of the board. Um, so they can see down that sight line, a librarians come across, the Dread Knight moves around, some strikes are there. I'm like, right, here we go. 
Part one of the plan is killing this rhino quickly. Cool, we'll do that. Librarian into rhino, roll the one. Don't kill myself, but it's irrelevant. That part of the plan has gone wrong. Now I'm like, uh, this is an issue. And at that point, things just descended a bit. And at the end of that turn, I had killed the legionnaires I'd killed the Rhino, and I'd killed like two Chosen, three, no, sorry, four Chosen from the Brick that was outside. But he still had a Lord and a Chosen, and he still had um, the other five Chosen. And now he was like, in my lines. Over the next couple of turns, we had a bit of back and forth. I was able to deal with that, but he kept knocking me off, so I was going down on primary. And the problem with this is that I don't have a secret mission option. Um, so, because I can't kill all his battle line, I'm not going to hold enough objectives at the end because they're being burned. Um, I had to burn Drago's six inch charge on basically off my own back line to get into the Chosen to kill all them. We're struggling. On top of that, he's scoring his cards a lot better than I am. And I'll be honest with you, I was just flagging. Um, I've, if Alex, if you're watching, I do apologise. I don't think I was probably the best opponent. I tried my best, but quite often I was just sat there and suddenly be like, no, you need to engage with the person you're playing. I was trying to be nice, but at the same time, I was just done. I was so tired. I didn't feel the game was going well. And that's annoying because actually the game is so much closer than, um, <laughs> than it could have been. I actually do feel like I had outs there. I wasn't aware of it really. I had a go at it and I failed the nine inch charge at the end. But the reality is if I had pulled off this nine inch charge and structured it correctly, which I didn't do, um, I would have drawn this game um, because I would have got Storm Hostile Objective. Um, he wouldn't have got the burn off of my home field. And uh, I would have, and there would have been an additional um, and I, we also counted the primary wrong slightly on my turn at the end. Um, because I burnt his home field, I started at the turn of five to burn his home field one with my Paladin Brick, who should, probably should have shown up a turn earlier. Um, and I could have gone, right, I claim this objective as my own, now it's burnt. And powered that, linked it that way, so I would have had the extra points. And that would have been in a 79 or draw. As it is, as a max, I found the nine inch charge from Draco's unit to pick up the five legionnaires at the end who were on my home field. Um, but yeah, I think like Alex deserves full credit. Alex played it really well. He was well up for it. I wasn't. I'd like to play the game again. I think I'll give it a better go next time. Um, but yeah, the game was actually a lot closer than I realised. Alex said at the end he was starting to sweat. I was so unaware of what was going on, really, that I was just going through the motions. I didn't realise how close it was. Um, so yeah, I lost that game, <sighs> which means I lost, or oh, I finished 2-3. <laughs> now, that's my worst tournament result in a couple of years, which was another LGT. Um, and last year's LGT, I went 4-1. Um, so, Inevitably, I was really, really disappointed in this result. Um, and I, having reflected on it, I've had a week now. For me, the reason it didn't go as well was because of the list building. Now, for those of you who watched the last episodes, I know a lot of you were like, oh, man, like, don't worry about it, Chris, don't overthink it, blah, blah, blah. Like, you were really supportive. I think I must have come off like I was, like, suicidal. Um, but... <sighs> The reality is what I did was I tried to build a list that could take on everything. And because of that, my list was, although had an out in every game, relied on me playing it really well, me getting it right every time um, and having good player skill. And I wasn't able to, um, I wasn't able to meet those expectations. I didn't have any good matchups with this list. I just had a decent chance I had a chance into everyone, but I didn't have any good strengths, barring, you know, if I play maybe a slightly weaker list. 
I should have gone down more of a one way route. And I think these days with Grey Knights in singles, I think you probably have to do that. I think you have to go, I'm going all in in this direction or I'm going all in in this direction. I think that's probably the route you have to now go um, in singles and then just hope you dodge the bad ones. Um, so I think realistically, list building was what hurt me here. Um, as I said earlier, I wasn't, I didn't actually, wasn't as rusty as I thought I would be. I wasn't as in good form as I would like, but I was feeling pretty confident, especially after the first two games. And this is an aside, but look after yourself at an event. An event you want to do well, you really need to look after yourself. You need to get that good sleep, get that hydration in. I don't think I did a very good job of that. Um, so yeah, I think rather than blaming dice or cards or anything like that, which, you know, they always balance themselves out. For me, I actually feel like I didn't do well in this tournament right at the list building stage. And that's what cost me. And that was the first time it happened for me, really. All the previous events, I was trying things out. This time I tried to build my best list possible. And I was found short there. And that sucks a bit, to be honest with you. Um, Anyway, the uh, updated matrix. I still think CSM's a decent matchup. I've ch I was going to move it more to like a nine, but you know what? I think I think it is fine, but I think it does come down to player skill. It does depend on the list. Like I feel better into like Soul Forge rather than Renegade, for example. Um, what else I play into? I played into Guard again. I've not played into eighteen Ball Green yet, so I can't say for sure. But it feels reasonably drawish. Um, Drakari is still a good matchup. I do know it is. I just can't win it because I'm an idiot. But if I had let, had, if I hadn't let him get the um, secret mission off, then um, you know I would have won that quite comfortably. Gladius, I feel like they have the tools to deal with us actually, so I don't feel like it is a good matchup. But you can still play for some points depending on the mission. Um, and then Votan again, I feel is okay. I'm actually scheduled. We've got Scrim versus Mind Goblins, and I'm paired into Votan. A very different list um, with a lot more bikes and sagittas and berserks. Um, and yeah, I'll see. Tom's a very good player, so I'll see if I can hold my own there and I'll um, see how that goes, really. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my LGT. In terms of analysing the units, how did they do? I really don't like librarians, guys. I'll be honest with you. Um, I don't think I got their use right, but they never really let me down. They rolled a lot more ones and sixes. I mean, that's by the by. But you have to put them together to focus down that damage, and they, no game did they come into their own. There's no, uh, like, against the Jakari, I was able to three inch deep strike one, and he picked up his home field objective holders. But other than that, no, it didn't do much for me. Um, yeah, I don't I think I might drop them. Strikes and interceptors, they did the job. I like the two strikes and the one interceptor. It means you can, you've got that solid output, or that, that solid, that solid ability to be like, oh, I'm quite confident and comfortable with um, my battle line um, uh, secret mission. And interceptors, the final fade is always useful. I, I don't think you need two, um, but yeah, it's fine. Dread Knights, when I used to run two, I then tried three and I was like, oh, actually having three is really nice. So when I went back to two, I was like, it's fine. I used to be okay with two Dread Knights. I actually don't think two Dread Knights is a good number at all. Having played five more games with it now, I think you kind of need zero or three. Um, I do like the Dread Knights. To be fair to them, they actually did very well this weekend. On the whole, they probably rolled slightly above average. I mean, they had their moments, you know. Like, one Dread Knight went into five Scourge and uh, hit twice and caused no wounds. So, you know, that happens. But other times, they did do well. They did roll a bit better than normal. But I think you do need three or zero Dread Knights. I would high now, having done it properly. Definitely don't take two. Terminators and Drago. This is a unit I struggle to use. Um, like, do you burn them early? Do you keep them late in case you want that as your secret mission option? Um, I, sometimes I got it right and sometimes I got it wrong. They didn't fail their six inch charge once this weekend, so well done, lads. Um, but yeah, I, I, 
you know what? <laughs> this is this weird situation where a lot of people go Drago and 10 Terminators and then they go, actually, I only need the five Terminators. I'm actually tempted to go back to 10 Terminators just to have that second threat. I think in this list, what I found was I was missing that second brick threat. Like I had the Paladins and they're fine, but that was it. Everything else was just a bit of everything. I needed to have a second brick threat. Obviously, traditionally, that's been my um, purifiers, but I feel like actually having that second brick threat would have been quite nice. Um, Grandmaster and Paladins, the ignore modifiers ever really came up, but I think it's needed these days just because of all the Necrons. I think they were the most represented faction there um, at the event. Um, the Paladins were okay. Side Cannons were okay. Um, Pool Bridge... Um, I know you like incinerators. Um, I know Jack Harps likes incinerators. I know lots of other people say side cannons. Um, I miss having the brother captain to really up level the side cannons. Maybe it's where if you go grandmaster, you go for incinerators. If you go brother captain, you go with side cannons. Maybe, maybe that's a deal. They weren't an Overwatch threat because they didn't have sustain. They didn't have flamers, so maybe try flamers. Who knows? Um, but the side cannons do just help you take out so many different targets that they are quite handy with that. With that. Um, so yeah, that's the LGT done. That is the season over. Um, I feel like I've gone a long way in terms of Grey Knights and at the same time, not very far at all. Um, I made a lot of progress. I felt I was playing them quite well. I was doing well with them. And then I started experimenting with the idea that I'd come back to them as this finished polished article and I wasn't able to deliver. So that is disappointing. Um, I, as I said, I only have a baby during two weeks, which means my playtime is probably going to diminish. You know, we may have heard babies take up a lot of time and ruin all your sleep. Um, my next event is the November International Teams Tournament um, at the end of the month. Then my next event after that will probably be another Teams event. So um, just because in these early stages of fatherhood, I don't really want to be away that much. Um, so I will I will have less to report on. Um, what I've done in the Grey Knight Discord is put out like, what do people want me to talk about? I've had a few suggestions. So I'm gonna try and do some videos around that as and when I get time. I will do a video about preparing for the ITT and sharing the list that I'm going to take for the ITT. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to say thank you. You know, like my last video um, received like lots and lots of comments um, and it was it's just nice to have you guys uh, listen and tune in. Um, hopefully you guys had a better tournament than I did if you were at the LGT. Interestingly though, we had one four one player, which was Marcus with his um, uh, with his Canis Rex and six Dread Knights. Everyone else only went three two or worse. Um, Grey Knights did not do well in singles. Good in teams, but they're not in a good place in singles at the moment. I don't think. Um, there is one other final thing I would like to discuss, which is the potential going fixed. Um, if you go establish Locus and behind enemy lines and you three inch deep strike for five turns, it's very, very hard for your opponent to be able to stop that. Some armies can, most can't. Uh, one of my teammates, Dave, went down that line. He actually took three bro chants with strikes and just went three inches away and it went, you've got to shoot me. So if you come fight me, I'm going to punch you back first. Um, so I think that was interesting. He went three, two. Um, so yeah, I think there's definitely a line in trying out that kind of just fixed game plan. So I might try that as well. I think, again, that's probably more a team's thing. Um, but yeah. Anyway, thank you very much. Uh, sorry, I'm still a bit ill. That's why I've been like wiping my nose and stuff. I sound a bit blocked up. Um, but yeah, leave comments. Come join the Discord if you haven't already. Like, subscribe, all the good stuff. And uh, yeah, for now, that's, uh, that's me over and out. Take care.